Hello, and welcome to our presentation for SAS Curiosity Cup 2023. We are Team 3 Sentinel from Babes Boy University, Romania, and we are going to talk about satellite image classification for detecting deforestation in Romania. The team members are myself, Adina Tilia, and my colleagues Lucian Cotolan and Bianca Marian. Our research was divided into five main sections, problem context and data, which will be presented by me, modeling, explained by Lucian, results and conclusions, shown by Bianca. Let us see the starting point of our research. Between 2010 and 2021, Global Forest Watch estimated using satellite images that Romania lost approximately 204,000 hectares of forest, equivalent to about 286,000 football pitches. Furthermore, from 2014 and 2018, more than 20 million cubic meters of wood were cut down, exceeding the legally permitted amount of 18 million cubic meters. We ask ourselves if there is any way to improve the current systems to reflect reality and not just the reported figures. To address this question, we train two deep learning models to classify images of deforested areas. Thus, the first step was collecting the data needed for training, validating and testing the models. The first dataset, retrieved from Kaggle platform, was used for training and validating the models and consists of 40,479 images captured from the Amazon basin between January 1, 2016 and February 1, 2017 using Planet's Flock 2 satellite. The second dataset is composed of images from the Sentinel-2 satellite during May 1, 2022 and July 31, 2022 to capture the forest in its greenest season. For accurate results, we collected satellite images with atmospheric corrections covering four distinct regions of the Romanian Carpathia. We began the process of data cleaning by removing images that contain clouds and habitation. We also excluded hazy images. Next, we resized all the images from 256 pixels to 224 pixels because most of the deep learning models were best with this specific size. As a result of the cleaning process, the sample size decreased to 32,162 and was divided in two categories, deforestation and non-deforestation. After collecting the four map tiles, each of them was then divided into 4,624 fragments, resulting in 80,496 total image fragments with a size of 160 by 160 pixel per image, and then resized to 224 by 224 pixels. The team manually categorized these fragments as either deforestation or non-deforestation and excluded any that did not fit the two categories, such as cities or villages. With the satellite images gathered and pre-processed, we were ready to start building our models. But first, the data had to be uploaded to our chosen platforms, SASVIA and Python. Due to some hardware limitations, Python was chosen to train our more computationally demanding model, the ResNet 50. 80% of the Amazon dataset was used for training, with the remaining 20% for validating the models. We plan to use all of our manually labeled data from Sentinel-2 to test how well our models could classify images from Romania, a region with a different climate zone than the Amazon basin. This means that our models would need to accurately classify images from a different environmental context, adding an additional layer of complexity to the testing phase. Convolutional neural networks are a type of deep learning algorithm that can process grid-like data, such as images. They can be used in many applications for image classification, object detection, and semantic segmentation. ResNet is a specific type of convolutional neural network that is pre-trained and can have a lot of convolutional layers thanks to its novel design. The goal of a convolutional layer is to extract features, such as edges, from the input image. It does so by moving a kernel of a certain size over the images 
and multiplying the raw color data of the image with the kernel to obtain a feature. Typically, a CNN has many of these convolutional layers, resulting in a model capable of extracting high-level features in a similar fashion to a human. For our chosen CNN architecture, we begin with an input layer, which is being fed the Amazon training images already loaded into a cast library in SAS that were also pre-processed and shuffled to reduce bias. Then we have a convolutional layer with a kernel size of 7x7 seven seven, with 10 filters and a stride of 1, followed by a max pooling layer which reduces the dimensions of the features and enables further capturing of low-level details. The following fully connected layer with 16 neurons takes the flattened image vector and through softmax classification can predict our two categories, deforestation and not deforestation. The resulting model had 2,012,980 parameters and was trained for five epochs using an Adam optimizer. For fine tuning our ResNet50 model, we used the same training data and the FastAI library in Python. This figure shows the main stages of the pre-trained ResNet50 model that contains 50 total layers. After building a learner using the pre-trained model, we fine-tune it for a total of 8 epochs. During the first 4 epochs, only the last fully connected layers were training. To validate both models, a set of metrics was chosen, mainly F1 score and precision score. Precision is the mathematical interpretation of the ratio of correct predictions from all the positive predictions. Recall calculates the ratio of the number of true positives to the total number of positive samples. Lastly, F1 score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. The F1 score provides a metric that is well suited for a class imbalanced dataset that can successfully judge a model based on both precision and recall. In the case of our problem, we are interested in how well our models scored for the positive class, deforestation. The table displays the model results on the validation set, which is 20% of the Amazon data. We can observe that the ResNet50 model outperformed our CNN, having an F1 score of 0.93. In the next section, we'll see how well our models performed on the Romanian dataset. Now, let's discuss the results we obtained. The confusion metrics of the ResNet50 model show that it correctly predicted 1,774 instances of deforestation and 359 instances of non-deforestation, but made 310 incorrect predictions of deforestation and 221 incorrect predictions of non-deforestation. As shown in the chart, the ResNet50 model had an overweighted average precision of 0.79 and a weighted average F1 score of 0.80. Regarding the CNN model, it accurately predicted 669 instances of non-deforestation and 66 instances of deforestation, with no incorrect predictions of non-deforestation. However, the model had difficulty generalizing and made inaccurate predictions of deforestation in 1,929 cases. The misclassification rate of the CNN model, also shown in the chart, was 0.65, indicating that 65% of the predictions made by the model on the Sentinel-2 data were incorrect, compared to the 19.2% for the fine-tuned ResNet50 model. Our findings suggest that pre-trained models such as ResNet50 can provide efficient solutions for challenging tasks like image classification of deforestation. The CNN architecture could be improved by adding more convolutional layers or incorporating techniques such as batch normalization or residual layers. Moreover, with suitable hardware and training, the SAS platform can be used to develop complex CNN architectures for image classification tasks or to fine-tune pre-trained models like ResNet. 
Machine learning can be a powerful asset in the fight against climate change for tracking deforestation. We are able to track changes in the amount of forest cover and locate areas at risk of deforestation by utilizing advanced algorithms and satellite data. This enables us to promote sustainable land use methods and take preventative action to save these sites. It's crucial to remember that machine learning is only one aspect of the solution to the deforestation problem. The root causes of deforestation, such as mining, logging, and agricultural expansion, must also be addressed. Ultimately, combining technology with campaigning and legislative initiatives can result in more successful solutions for preserving the woods in our world.